Welcome to prime time, bitch! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna cry out that voice. I almost got a voice crack from saying it. So, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do the ranking of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, worst to best. So, before I begin, I just want to say that I was doing a little trilogy thing for the big horror icons. The big three mainly, Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy Krueger. I saw with Michael Myers because he was the first, then Jason, then Freddy, because Michael's first movie came out in 1987, no, not 1978, Jason, 1980, and Freddy, 1984. So I did in the order their first film came out, how they were first introduced. So I saw with Freddy, best for last, and he's my favorite horror icon of all of them. In case you're wondering how I'm talking and stuff, I'm actually wearing my Freddy Krueger costume right now. You can't see it, but trust me, I'm wearing it. Like, I wouldn't make that voice in impression if I didn't. I'd show you my costume, but I, again, I don't really like showing myself anymore on here, so you're just gonna see the screen of Freddy talking, so yeah. But hey, at least I get to wear the costume for fun, in case you're wondering why my voice sounds like this through a Max. I'm wearing a Freddy Krueger Max right now. So yeah. And Michael Myers is my third fair horror icon. Jason is my second fair horror icon. So let's discuss why Freddy is my number one fair horror icon. The main reason is because I think he's the scariest of all the horror icons. And I know you might be thinking, how is Freddy scary? He's a fucking wisecracker. He's not as scary as Michael or Jason. I mean, have you seen those guys? Yeah, I have. But listen, if you're being chased by them, if you're being chased by either Chucky, Ghostface, Leatherface, Michael Myers, the Candyman, Jason Voorhees, the Leprechaun, Pinhead, fucking Pumpkinhead, well, you might not honor out on Pumpkinhead. You, know, you could probably cannot run pumpkin and say he's the fucking creature and he could run really fast, but pretty much all those horror icons I mentioned, you can outrun them. Like, you can all outrun them. Even Jason, of all people. Like, you can out fucking run him. But for Freddy, you can't escape him. Like, he can kill you in your dreams. Pretty much you're fucked. Like, pretty much you can escape from being chased by, if you get chased by Michael Myers and Jason, you can pretty much outrun them and be safe. You sure you have a chance of dying, but still, you'll have a chance of outrunning them unless Freddy Krueger. For Pinhead, you just gotta summon a box to bring him out. But for Freddy, he kills you in your dreams, so you're pretty much screwed. That's why Freddy, for me, is the scariest. I know some people are like, well, we kind of a wisecracker, but imagine you're in a situation like this. I know you never will, but imagine you're in these horror movies, and imagine which one you'd be scared of the most. I'd be scared of Freddy Krueger the most, because some guy killing people in their dreams, yeah, that's scary, because it's kind of like you can never escape him, so it's like there's no way of killing him unless you bring him out of the dream realm, but he'll come back either way. He always comes back. But what really brings him back is fan service and cold hard cash. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the rankings, bitch. Number nine is the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. This film is bad. This is probably not one of the worst horror movies ever made. Like, it's far from one of the worst horror movies ever made. It's still a bad movie, but the rate I'm going to give it is for a really bad movie. But it's not Halloween Resurrection bad because this film, while it's bad, it's actually still watchable. Like, even, like, I would say this film is probably better than Friday 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, and Halloween Resurrection because those two films are boring and forgettable. Friday 13th Part 5 is at least boring but watchable. Halloween Resurrection is just unwatchable. At least with this, this is watchable. I guess because I'm a Nightmare on Elm Street fan, and I guess Jackie R. Haley's performance is why I kind of enjoy parts of the movie and not just full-on hate it like some Elm Street fans, because I partially like this movie, but I still find it the worst in the series. The problem with this is that it's a rehash of the previous films. Like, You'll find many things, references to the previous movies where it's not even, like, its own movie. It's just like, oh, remake it. Let's just rehash everything from the first movie. Like, they, re they reuse the same lines and shit. Like, at the end, Freddy dies in the same way he died in Freddy vs. Jason, except he gets his throat slit instead. She's, and Nancy's like, because you're in my world now, bitch. And it's like, ugh, they couldn't go, they couldn't. Like, they couldn't get with that to you. And then Freddy's repeating a lot in Elm Street 4 saying, How's this for a wet dream? And pretty much repeating every little scene from the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie. From the see him coming through the ceiling, um, Nancy's little friend in, the, in a body bag covered in blood. 
and Freddy's claw coming out of the bathtub. Like, all that's being reused in this film. Like, an exact rehash. Like, just like in parts of Rob Zombie's Halloween when it got to the Michael Myers escaping stuff. Like, after that stuff, he just pretty much tried to rehash the first Halloween movie. That's pretty much what this is, except pretty much the whole movie. Like, unlike Rob Zombie's Halloween, which tr- actually tried something different, not just follow the same movie again, just in the modern world. No. This is just a straight-up rehash. Like, it just copies every little thing from um Tina. I think her name was Tina in the original. Pretty much her death is pretty much the same way, except in here it's less creative or less interesting. Because it, it was it was done twice already, New Nightmare and the original. And it was much better in those movies anyway. Yeah, so the problem with this biggest problem is that this is just a rehash of the previous films. Just merge into one and just give it a reboot, I guess. And there's too many jump scares in this movie. Like, jump scares in horror movies aren't a big deal to me. But the problem is that I feel like they try to use it too much where they try to scare their audience. And it does work sometimes to me. Don't wor- don't get me wrong. But Nightmare on Elm Street does it too much where... This one does it too much where it gets really obnoxious. Like, one scene where, um... Jess... I think... Yeah, Jess... Je- not Jess... Je- Jesse's ex is at a funeral with her, uh, pretty much her mo- current boyfriend, she's at her current boyfriend's funeral, who was the first character to die, she's a little girl with a claw on her dress, and Freddy grabs her leg, and then she wakes up, and pretty much that's very disrespectful, and it was just a jump scare, but first of all, if that jump scare was unnecessary, because it just makes her very disrespectful, because you should not sleep at your own boyfriend's funeral, like, that's very disrespectful, young lady, no wonder you were killed off, and you, we had your bland protagonist instead, like your friend Nancy. Speaking of, besides Freddy Krueger, Nancy's the only recurring character with uh, the first name. She has a different last name in this movie. And pretty much, this Nancy is not interesting at all. She's kind of boring. Like, I kind of would have preferred if we had the blonde girl in the beginning. Like, it pretty much that she was going to be the main protagonist, but then she was pretty much based off Tina's character, just more screen time, and she dies. So then we go on to Nancy. So pretty much, th- well, pretty much what the remake did is that pretty much the first movie it had Tina. She didn't seem as interesting as Nancy. So they kill off Tina, and they have Nancy, who is who was probably better off being the main protagonist in the original series and the series as a whole. But what the remake does is that they make this character that Tina was based off of in the remake more interesting than Nancy. This Nancy is very boring and the actress doesn't do a very good job. She's kind of just very bland and stuff. And I think Quinn, her boyfriend, is a much better character and probably would have been a better protagonist anyway. He, In fact, they actually had him in Dead by Daylight as a Freddy's little um car- victim thing. Because, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why they had 2000... I think they have the 2010 reboot Freddy designed Dead by Daylight. I know they have it for MK11. No, MK11. MK9. So yeah, pretty much the all the modern Freddy Krueger content you'll get is from MK9 and Dead by Daylight. And I guess the fan game Terradrome. But yeah, and another thing is... The, another big problem is not just because it's a rehash. It's because the characters are bland. Mainly the main character. And... The main one of the main other things is that Freddy Krueger is a pedophile. Yeah, in the original series, he was never a pedophile. He was a child killer. He killed children. That's why they the parents confronting him and burned him alive because when court just let him go. Cause I don't know if this show is still canon, but there's a show called Freddy's Nightmare, which is pretty much a prequel to all the movies. And they had a scene where Freddy was in court before he got burned, and he was burned a different way, so it might not long, it might no longer be canon because of Freddy vs. Jason's beginning, so it probably isn't canon anymore. Actually, no, Freddy's Dead the Final Nightmare kind of started that thing first with the with the demon shit. So pretty much, I don't think Freddy's Nightmare is canon anymore because of certain part certain scenes were changed in the timeline. So I'm guessing that show's not canon anymore. But I will say probably that courtroom scene is still canon on its own. And that scene still happened in the timeline. It's just it wasn't shown. I don't know. But pretty much it just that scene's probably still canon in the original timeline. And then the parents confront him because they think he deserves to be killed because he killed their children. And they burn him alive and he gets these demons and they absorb him and he comes back as a evil demon in people's nightmares. And pretty much, they do something like that in the original, and they burn him, which was a cool scene. But they don't have the parademon. Not the parademons, no. 
hair demons. No, the flowing head demons type thing. Whatever Freddy's Dead had. But they didn't show that here. I guess because they thought it'd be stupid for a 2010 remake or reboot in general. And, and um, yeah. But anyway, back to the pedophile thing. Like, it's very disturbing. It's re- Like, I always wondered why he... Like, as a little kid, I didn't understand what Freddy was in this, re- in, the, in this remake. But then as I got older, I'm like, oh my god, he was a pedophile. Like, when they said he was, a, like, a pedophile, I did not. I had no idea what that meant back in the day. So, I had no idea what pedophile meant until I asked my mom a, a few years later. And now I'm older, I'm like, oh my god, he was a pedophile when I went back to watch this movie. Actually, for the first time. It's actually my... I've actually only watched this movie once. I just watched reviews of it mostly because I don't feel like wasting my time watching this movie again. So, yeah. I am not comfortable with Freddy being a pedophile because there's this one part of the film where Nancy's in a dress and he's like, this was my favorite dress. And it's really disturbing. And he says to her, your mouth says no, but your body says yes. Mm. And it's like, oh, gross. Like, Jackie O'Hara's Freddy Cooper does a phenomenal job where it makes you so uncomfortable. Like, it's, like, so disturbing looking. Like, oh, like, ugh. And another few things I want to talk about is that for Freddy Cooper's face design, they want to make him look like a real burn victim. But inst- I, they kind of made him still look like himself. So some people say he looks like melted cheese in this movie. But I actually wonder what Freddy would have looked like if he looked like a real burn victim. If they plan to do another Nightmare on Elm Street movie, but a reboot, I hope they make Freddy look like a real burn victim and look and make him look super scary. Because I would love a Nightmare on Elm Street remake that would have Freddy like be fucking scary. Like probably the most terrifying Freddy yet. So, yeah, and sadly, this is the last Nightmare on Elm Street film in the series as a whole. Like, you probably won't get another one for a long time. Halloween came back, Child's Play came back, Ghostface is coming back. Jason has not come back yet because of the lawsuit and Sam with Freddy. So those two guys have lawsuit bullshit going on. The Friday 13th lawsuit is the reason why the game stopped being updated. And it's only being updated for PC players. Fucking lucky bastards. But... Yeah, so pretty much we won't have a movie with those two guys for a while, sadly. So pretty much it's been a whole decade since these guys had a movie, sadly. The best you'll get for these guys for movies is fan films. I mean, you probably get TV shows for animated series or something, but not theatrical releases like Michael Myers. So, yeah. What a shame. I really wanted to see these guys on the big screen again. So enough with the negative, let's talk about some positives. So the first thing I want to talk about is Jack O'Hara as Freddy Krueger. He's great as Freddy Krueger. He does a great job. He played Warshack and Watchmen a year earlier. And him, casting him as Freddy Krueger as, like, you know, the next actor to play Freddy Krueger was a great choice. Whoever came up with that idea did a great job. Like, bravo to you. Like, you did a good job pr- having a good actor play Freddy Krueger. Show he's no near Robert Englund good. Robert Englund is Freddy Krueger. But Jackie O'Hara does a good job playing Freddy Krueger as well. And if there was a new actor playing Freddy Krueger, I probably would probably say, like, oh, he's good, but I kind of think he's my least favorite of the three. Like, I say Jackie O'Hara is the best thing about this movie like he is what sell this movie like even the disturbing pedophilia of freddy krueger this version of freddy krueger like it sells very well for this version of freddy and uh, they tried this film actually tried to make freddy scary again like this didn't just try to make him a wisecracker but scary at the same time no well i mean he did tell jokes here and then the film but this one tried to make him more scared than with the amount of jump scares and a little bit of real life burn victim, but he still looked like melted cheese, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that was pretty much what they were trying to do. So yeah, I got two pause out of the way. And the third positive I want to talk about is the alternate ending. So I saw the alternate ending for this movie, and I'm like, why was this alternate ending not used for the actual movie? Like, why wasn't this the real ending? Because the ending they used in the movie was bad. So pretty much how Freddy got defeated in the alternate ending was he has his human face on where the scenes where, you know, he pretty much, it's kind of similar with the original ending, except Freddy's no longer has his burn face. He has his human-like face, and he gets pulled out of the dream dream realm. And instead of getting his hand chopped off and repeating a line from Freddy vs. Jason and get his throat slit. Here, he has his human form, and she beats the crap out of him with a baseball bat, and then she burns him alive. 
Like that is more satisfying ending, and he's oh, and Jackie O'Hare's performance in that alternating was great. Like if that ending was in the film, then I probably would say that this film was all right. Like I say, this would be an okay film, but with the shitty ending we got, like I'm not satisfied. Like why'd you why'd you go with the ending in the why'd you go with that ending? Like why couldn't you have the alternate ending? That ending's much better. Like if the nightmare if they're the new if they were celebrating a Nightmare on Street remake anniversary. Please put the alternate ending on that version, please, because I'd rather watch that alter- that ending than the one we got. So, yeah, in conclusion, wow, 12 minutes talking about the remake. I'm going to give the 2010 remake a 3 out of 10. It's a really bad movie. If you're a hardcore Nightmare on Elm Street fan and you want a new Freddy Krueger movie, this is all you're getting, sadly. But I reckon you just skip it and just watch Freddy vs. Jason instead. Or if you want a Fred Cougar like remake and you don't want to watch the remake, just watch Russ Craven's New Nightmare because it's sort of a remake, but not really. But it feels remake-ish. Number 8, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Not as bad as the remake. The remake is god-awful. However, this film is stupid. Like, this film doesn't even feel like a horror movie. And this was meant to be the last Nightmare on Elm Street movie. But then four years later, New Nightmare happened to make him scary again because this film made Freddy Krueger a complete wisecracker. In Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5, sure, he was a wisecracker, he told jokes and stuff, but he still had that horror feeling to him. Here, he was just full-on Looney Tunes. And the thing is that pretty much this it ignores the films of 4 and 5 or pretty much the story of 4 and 5 they're still canon to the series but what I mean is that whatever was happening in Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5 is all thrown out the window in the beginning of this movie because this movie takes place 10 years after the 5th film and Freddy Krueger killed all the kids on Elm Street so everyone's dead except for one kid and there's 4 other kids named Spencer who's in the video games and smokes pot um Carlos, who has a hearing aid, and I forgot the one chick, but pretty much she had a dad, a molesting dad, and has anger issues and punches things, so that's pretty much them. And then there's the John Doe, who is supposed to be our main protagonist until he dies. And the why I call him John Doe is because he has amnesia, and we're supposed to find out who he is because he refuses to get any sleep, and he was sent for a reason. So pretty much when he dies... We never find out what his real name was. It's like he was only needed so Freddy, so he could find Freddy's daughter, pretty much. So, like they had this thing where he was, he, he believed he was Freddy's son, but turns out no, he's just a nobody. Like we never find out who he is, what his real name was, where he came from, because pretty much when he is in his first dream in the film, he gets pretty much out of the dream realm through a cartoon-like style. And pretty much wakes up there, like, just out of nowhere. So it's like, where was he previously? Like, it doesn't make any sense, like, at all. Like, you pretty much just wasted his character. Like, there was no point in introducing him if he was going to die. It doesn't make any sense. So, back right, back with the Looney Tunes thing. So, Freddy Tunes... This film is pretty much Looney Tunes, but with Freddy Krueger. Like, when Spen... Not Spencer, but... Oh, yeah, you know. Spencer pretty much dies in a video game way. So, Freddy has the power glove. And he uses... And he pretty much plays a Freddy Krueger-like game. And kills Spencer. And that's how Spencer dies. And Freddy kills Carlos by having given him a super hearing and scratching his claw, glove with a chalkboard. And his head explodes, which is pretty cool. And then, when Freddy's about to kill the John Doe, Freddy is pushing this car with spikes. Pretty much the, um, th- that road chipper Looney Tunes cartoon. Pretty much. Like, he looks at the camera and it's like, huh, huh. And he actually looks at the camera and he has show, yeah, Freddy broke the fourth wall in this movie. And pretty much, the John Doe dies and stuff. And then we find out, well, like I said, Freddy has a daughter. So, the, after John Doe dies, the protagonist is Freddy Krueger's daughter. And it's not the girl who I mentioned, it's some other girl whose name I forgot, but pretty much she's Freddy's real daughter, and we have flashbacks of it, and why he killed the remaining children, but it doesn't make sense, because she's saying that, like, they took you away from me, and I, so I, in return, I killed their children, but Freddy, 
the reason they took her away was because you were killing their children. That's why you killed your wife when she said she wouldn't tell anyone. You killed her right in front of your daughter. Like, ugh. And then we got the demon head thing. So pretty much as her daughter, his daughter's going through flashbacks of him, like in the vision where he killed the pet hamster, where he had abusive stepfather. And then we get to when he's on fire, these demon heads come to him and he's like, oh, I want it all. And he said, then you shall be forever. And then he becomes Freddy Krueger. And it's done pretty silly. He's not going to lie. And ugh, it was, I, I would actually say him getting burned alive was much better in the remake, actually. I don't know. It just looked much better. Here, it was just ridiculous. I mean, the demon head thing is not a bad idea. It kind of explains how Freddy's immortal and shit. I, I think that it makes kind of sense why he's immortal and shit. And then we got the 3D shit at the end. Yeah, the third act is completely 3D. Especially when Freddy dies, he explodes two times. No, two times because his head barfs out another head. And then the demon heads come out and float around like laughing and stuff. Then they go away. Pretty much finding the next, pretty much whatever three headed de- three head watch a dangerous man on Elm Street, whatever some shit, but they probably never do. Like they're actually never brought up in Freddy vs Jason, and probably will never bring it up again because I think Freddy vs Jason is the last movie in this Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Because if there was a future Nightmare on Elm Street film, Robert Englund wouldn't be involved because again he said he was retiring as Freddy Krueger, so we would need a new actor unless. Robert Englund played someone else in the series. Just, well, someone else was Freddy Krueger, and he was the protagonist. That would actually be kind of cool. So for Freddy's Dead, I'm going to give Freddy's Dead The Final Nightmare a 5 out of 10. It's not horrible. It's just very badly goofy. Number 7 is Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child. So, unlike Freddy's Dead, this film actually recapped what happened in Part 4 because that's we mentioned how Freddy comes back. So... Pretty much, this exploits his mother again. Like, in part three, we find out that the nun at the end was his mother. And here, we learn more about her and how Freddy was born. She was raped by a bunch of insane uh, mental patients. And one of them was Freddy Krueger's father. Probably hinting that, because one of them was Robert Englund as an Easter egg. So, that probably was Freddy Krueger's father. And in Goldberg, they made a joke about it when Freddy said, I knew it. I never knew any of my fathers, and I turned out just fine. And I'm like, oh, I get that joke. So it's kind of funny. Even Robot Chicken made a joke about it when Freddy's like, it's my wedding day. Like like that. So but anyways, back to the number no sheet. So pretty much when Freddy gets resurrected, Amanda Kruger comes in the dreams too. And Freddy's actually scared of his own mother. And it's actually surprising of all people. And all things he's afraid of. He's afraid of his own mother. Because her his mother's a nun. She's a good person. And Freddy's like this monster. Pretty much all those people who raped her. And stuff. Yeah. So yeah. And the characters like I said is Alice. She's the main protagonist. Uh, she was the main protagonist of the last movie. And here she is pregnant with a child. And Freddy is pretty much killing Alice's friends. It, while the she's while she's awake cuz the baby's dream it's it's weird to explain but pretty much she kills he not she he kills Alice's boyfriend pretty much the kid's father and he'll never get to see his father and one of Alice's other friends who pretty much it's the scene where Freddy's like bon appetit bitch and then Freddy feeds her pretty much a lot of stuff her own stomach like it's disgusting like the effects for the mouth and so like it's so gross but then there's a i forgot the guy's name but he liked the girl that pretty much was eating her own stomach he dies in a creative way where he gets sucked inside a comic book with pretty much aha kind of f- filter and he pretty much k- gets killed he pretty much turns into a paper comic book and freddy like pretty much shreds him in a comic book way and it's like so creative like sure it's not gory but that's such a creative kill that's probably the one of the best things about this movie like that kill is very creative so pretty much oh, alice's remaining friend tells her to find a man recruiter's body to put her to rest so she can stop freddy once and for all quote, once and for all, because he comes back and Freddy's dead, to be killed by his daughter this time. So, pretty much, Alice's unborn child um, pretends to join Freddy, but then he betrays Freddy, and he gets absorbed by his own mother, and he tries to escape, but his mother prevents him. 
he probably escaped eventually because we see him later. So, yeah, and then Alice has her new child is born, and pretty much Freddy probably kills them both because Freddy's dead takes place 10 years later because all kids in Elm Street are dead, pretty much. So, yeah. So, while this one is not as awful as the remake and not as ridiculous as Freddy's Dead, this one's actually pretty okay. I give this one probably a 6 out of 10. Number 6, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. So, this film is an indirect sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors, which is probably the, one of the best films in the entire franchise. Any hardcore Nightmare on Elm Street fan can agree. And pretty much the remaining cast from that film comes back and they actually accidentally resurrect Freddy Krueger. Well, one of them does but because this one of the guys, I've got the guy's name, but his dog pisses out fire and resurrects Freddy. And pretty much Freddy comes back and kills the remaining cast from the f- previous film. And we get a bunch of new characters like Alice, her brother, her friends... Pretty much all her brother and her friends all die by Freddy in new ways, new creative ways. I'd probably say her brother Jeff is the stupidest because Freddy is just invisible and his glove just stabs him off screen. Like, it's just kind of dumb. I'd say Joey from Nine on Elm Street Part 3 had the best death where he sees this girl in the waterbed and then Freddy guess, how's this for a wet dream? Yeah, for some reason I remember it as, spoil the wet dreams, huh? Like, I remember it like that. Because that, that sounds like something Freddy would say and it is. And this movie's where Freddy became the full-on wisecracker. He wasn't that guy who was always a mystery and afraid. Because in the first movie, you didn't get a good look of him. He was a mist. He didn't know much about him. He was just a uh, guy in the shadows. You didn't know much about him. He's pretty much a mystery. Nine on Elm Street Part Two, he was kind of a similar thing. He was still that scary guy. Same with Part Three. You pretty much like knew everything about him by then. We all, you all knew him. So it makes sense for the fourth film. To have him be out of the shadows and him be the full-on wisecracker we all know and love. And pretty much as the, the all of her friends die off, she gets, um, Alice gets their abilities and becomes the Dream Master. And she shows Freddy her own, his, his own reflection and Freddy's chest souls pretty much escape him and then tear him apart and they're all set free. I actually kind of would have liked if they showed the that they're her friends, like even Nancy. That would probably would have been cool. But hey, at least she came back in New Nightmare, even though that's not canned to the main series. But you know the drill. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool either way. So for that, I'm going to give Dream Master a 7 out of 10. It's a decent Norman Elm Street movie, but not one of the best. But it's still a watchable movie. Number five is Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. So when this film first came out, even when I first saw it, I hate it and a lot of fans hate it. But I just hate it because everyone else hate it. And I just said, like, I just made shit up why, why I hate it. And the main reason people hate it because how gay it was. And it's kind of stupid. People called this the gayest horror movie ever, one of the gayest horror movies ever because of the male protagonist, and they say the character's sort of gay, yet he has a girlfriend, so it kind of doesn't make any sense, and he goes to a gay strip bar, and he meets his gym teacher. The one thing I find weird about that is that, like, imagine going to a, uh, somewhere, and then you meet your math teacher, and they say, hey, pull out a calculator. Like, oh, God, if my math teacher, my current one, saw me and said, pull out a calculator in a random place, I would have fucking nightmares. I would be like, Freddy, help me. So, pretty much, you're having Freddy help you, Jesse. But, pretty much, Freddy does something different. So, instead of, like, just killing, constantly killing people in their dreams, instead he, he absorbs um, Jesse's body. He says, you've got the body, I've got the brain. And Freddy pulls out his brain, and that's just a cool scene. In fact, this is where Freddy actually is probably his most scariest looking, and of all, excuse me, of all the movies. Like, this is where he's kind of in the dark. It's hard to get a good look of him. And his glove is, he doesn't have a glove anymore. The, na- the, f- the sharp nails are now on his fingers. Like, he has fingernails now. And pretty much when F- Jesse's asleep, Freddy comes out and kills one. He goes on a killing spree and kills the most people he's ever done in the series as a whole. And the coolest thing ever when Freddy first comes out of Jesse is that Je- Freddy Krueger hasn't pops an eye in Jesse's mouth, and then Freddy's coming out of Jesse's chest like an alien from the Xenomorph series, and Freddy like 
like just pops the fuck out and just guts everywhere on him and it's like so fucking cool for the effects at the time like it was done very well and Fre- and there's one scene when Freddy goes on a massacre. The one guy tries to calm down. Freddy's like, "Help yourself, fucker!" And sure, it's kind of out of character for Freddy to do something like this. But hey, it's actually something different. And actually, it's a very interesting idea. It's kind of a shame not a lot of fans praise this film because this is actually a really good movie, and it does mention the previous film. So yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two is actually a good Nightmare on Elm Street movie. One of the better ones in general, actually, because it has that scarier Freddy Krueger. If you're more a fan of that one. So I kind of like that they made Freddy Krueger more scary. And it felt a bit different from the other Nightmare on Elm Street films on this list. Because, again, they tried something different before Dream Warriors tried something different. So I like the idea they're doing it. Hopefully they do another idea like this again. Because this was actually a smart idea. And let's talk about the dance scene when Jesse has to clean his room. Like the song he has and the, the gay kind of atmosphere people say. Like I, when I first saw that scene, I actually liked that scene. Because I, I almost started dancing to that scene. I'm like, woo, kind of thing. And it's like, oh my god. Like, I love, that's probably my favorite scene the entire movie. Like, I can meme that scene all I want. Like, I imagine myself dressed as my Freddy Krueger costume and doing that exact same thing. But not doing the, whatever, the weird stuff. But no, more of that, when he had that thing, or then when his girlfriend and mom came in, he popped it. And then when, when if my mom or ex, or future girlfriend come in, see me do that, I'd be like, oh, hi. <laughs> but yeah. So, for conclusion, I'm going to give Nightmare Part 2 um, a 7 out of 10. It's a decent Nightmare on Elm Street movie, but it's still not perfect. It is kind of and for, it kind of out of character for Freddy to go kill out people in the real world because he's always killing people in their dreams and stuff. But it's still an interesting idea, but I wish it was done better. But, hey, hopefully we'll see it again someday. So, yeah, 7 out of 10. Number 4 is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So, pretty much after... Freddy said the final nightmare said that there it would be the last Nightmare on Elm Street movie as uh, as a whole until Freddy vs. Jason. They did the same thing with Jason for Jason Goes to Hell. And so Freddy's Dead and Jason Goes to Hell was meant to be the final movies. But then they both came back with sequels before Freddy vs. Jason. Jason X and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. But they're kind of confusing in the timeline. Jason X is said to take place after Freddy vs. Jason. While New Nightmare ignores all the movies... And has Freddy come to the real world. So pretty much this film is a prototype of Scream. But with Freddy Krueger. And it says Wes Craven comes back as the director. And make Freddy scary again. After New Night. Not New Nightmare. Um, Freddy's dead. Made him a complete Looney Tunes character. So pretty much the last film. Excuse me. After the last film pretty much was Looney Tunes. But with Freddy Krueger. And now he's actually scary again. They made him much scarier looking. He no longer looks like how he did in the previous six films. And this does actually not count as... It is the sense from the series, but it's not counting the original timeline. Like, the first six movies through part one, Freddy's Dead, like, that was the original timeline. And then Freddy vs. Jason happened. And that pretty much ends the timeline. While there's this own film, New Nightmare, and, of course, the awful reboot. This, to me, is more of a truer remake than the remake itself. Because, while this is sent from the series, it does a really great idea with Freddy Krueger. Have him come to the real world much scarier looking, more of a demon from hell. And he has a signature bladed glove where now he has a claw on his thumb. Like, we didn't get to see the iconic death that Tina had in, um... Part one, when she's all, all bleeding all over the room and stuff. Like, now you get to see how Freddy did it. Like, he called it Skin the Cat. And my cat's right here. Oh, I don't mean a scary little one. But pretty much, yeah. And, of course, we have Robert Eggman play Freddy Krueger. He plays as himself in this movie. And the actress plays Nancy. And pretty much anyone from the first movie came back and just played themselves, pretty much. And in order to defeat Freddy this time, Nancy... The actress becomes Na- the Nancy character and kills Freddy once and for all, mostly the demon Freddy. And at the end of the film, she reads her kid a bedtime story, pretty much reading the script of Russ Kramer's new nightmare. Um, I mean, it's a great ending, but the one problem with that ending is that her, her husband died and 
So, pretty much, good luck telling your kid a bedtime story where his father fucking dies. That's a great idea, Nancy. <laughs> but I'm sure it wasn't thought out back then, but whatever. It really doesn't matter because this is one of the better Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Not a masterpiece, but it is still very enjoyable and one of the best ones in the series. Like, Freddy is scarier again. And the makeup design is phenomenal. I would have loved a Nightmare on Elm Street sequel or a remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. And they went to a, this direction. Like, say they made a sequel to the remake if they ever did and they have... Say it be based off New Nightmare. Like I would love to have a re- continuation of this universe as Freddy instead of the one we ended up getting. I don't know. That's a little fun fan theory and a little cool thing to do. But of course, he's not the Freddy we all know and love from the original film and the later movies. But he, this Freddy is equally as good, and I think he deserves to exist. So for that, I'm gonna give New Nightmare a nine out of ten. Great film. Number three is Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors. Now, this film, many consider it even better than the original and the best film in the entire series. I agree of it being one of the best Nightmare on Elm Street films and probably the best Nightmare on Elm Street sequel besides... Well, we'll get to it eventually, but you know the drill. But as for solo Nightmare on Elm Street films, so this is the best sequel ever. And many can agree, but I will say that it's not as good as the original, but it's still a perfect Nightmare on Elm Street sequel. Many people consider this the true second film. Like, they ignore part two, then go to part three instead, because part three feels more of a continuation of the first movie. While part two is still canon, mentioning the events of part one, it brings back Nancy and pretty much brings back pretty much any recurrent character from the first movie that was still alive and introduces Freddy's mother, Amanda Kruger, and pretty much his origin story and how to kill him once and for all. They try to bury him and put him to rest, his skeleton to rest, and this is where Freddy is shown shirtless for shirtless for the first time with his chest of souls, and this also gave creative ideas, so pretty much these people at these uh this mental institution with these kids um one of them i forgot her name but she pretty much can bring people into her dreams and nancy had other these other people and they had all these special powers and they all combined together to kick freddy's ass pretty much one of them he's this guy this nerd he's a paral he's paralyzed but in the dream he's now this wizard he gets killed by freddy and there's one chick who's a hot chick and deadly she gets um Drugged by Freddy by the creepy little mouth moving on her arms, which is fucking weird. But and Freddy has his the um needles instead of claws now. He's like, let's get hot thing. And then we have um Joey who wasn't really much in this film, which he just likes some nerves, but then turned out to be Freddy, and now they have to save him and stuff. And I forgot the other guy, but he was the guy in part four who dog brought back Freddy in the dream. So, pretty much, he's, like, this buff guy. He's over here on the poster. You see him, actually. And he's pretty much has anger issues, pretty much, until we see him, that he's, like, being all tough and stuff. And we have this one chick who smokes a lot, and Freddy kills her through a TV. He's like, not the prime time, bitch. And it's actually really cool to um see that. And, yeah, there's so many iconic kills in this film. Like, there's a lot of great things. And it felt like the true Nightmare on Elm Street sequel. Many can agree that... Anything with part one, part three, and New Nightmare, people consider those the best Nightmare on Elm Street movies. In fact, you can might as well just call it as the trilogy of the, probably the, I, I don't know if Wes Craven was involved with this movie, but part of me feels like it was, because with Wes Craven, he's the creator of Nightmare on Elm Street, the best movies have him involved. But the number one pick is not going to... Ha- I don't think he was involved with it at all. But I still love it as my favorite. And I think if you saw my Friday 13th ranking, then you know what it is. But if you, if you want to sh- see my opinion on it again, then sure. So, yeah. Not much to say about Dream Warriors other than it's a great film and it's perfect. For that, I'm going to give Dream Warriors a 10 out of 10. This film is a masterpiece. It's probably one of the best horror movie sequels of all time. And probably one of the best Nightmare on Elm Street sequels of all time. Number two is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. This film is probably my third favorite horror movie of all time, without a doubt. It is very well written, and it introduces Freddy, and this film makes Freddy feel completely different from being the wisecracker we all know and love. This Freddy remained in the shadows, and he was actually scary. They made him super scary because 
they made him a mystery in this whole, like, movie. Like, because in the other films, we all knew him, and you didn't have to show put him in the shadows. But for this, he's a whole mystery. First time watching this movie is a great experience because you're, like, wondering who this guy is. But now when you watch the movie, you know who he is. But the mystery and the iconic moments in this film are great, including Glenn's death, which is probably the best death of the entire series. Like, Freddy sucks him under the bed and then pretty much has a blood... Blood comes out of the bed... And pretty much has a, like, it's just fucking amazing. Like, they even used that first fatality in Mortal Kombat 9, like, because it was that good. Like, anyone can agree that's probably the best death of the entire movie, without a doubt. Like, in the entire franchise, too. Like, like for Jason, his best kill, in my opinion, is probably um when he punches the guy's head off. For Michael, it's, uh, I don't know, Michael never really had a kill where I'm like, oh my god, it's awesome. But Jason and Freddy pretty much had a kill where I'm like, oh my god, this is, like, the best kill. My favorite Jason kills when he punches the guy head off. Freddy, it's for when he sucks Glenn under the bed and blood squirts everywhere. It's fucking awesome. Like, it was brilliant. And this shows that Freddy is, like, you know, he can actually be scary sometimes. Like, here, he's actually scary for the first time. And he remains in the shadows most times, so you can't get a good look of his face. In fact, sometimes it's hard to get, see what he looks like in the first movie because each film, he kind of actually looks different with the makeup and stuff. Here, he actually had a piece of his ear burned. Like, he actually had a bit of burnt sides. So, he kind of almost looked like a real burnt victim, but not really. But, hey, at least he didn't look like melted cheese. Here, he actually looked like the Freddy we all know and love. But he was more of a horror, like, character here. Like, a creepy guy here instead of uh, the funny comedic horror guy we all know and love. And he didn't have green stripes on his sweater. He just had full-on red on his shoulder pads. Not shoulder pads, but his arms. He only had green stripes on the front of his sweater, not the whole stuff, so, I mean, actually, part two brought that look, so, yeah, so, yeah, there's not much to talk about, other than that this film is a masterpiece, it's a classic, it's one of the best horror movies ever made, and it's an obvious 10 out of 10, because I said it's a masterpiece, it's probably one of the best horror movies ever made of all time, and what made me a Nightmare on Elm Street fan, and Freddy Krueger my favorite horror icon of all time, and this probably resurrected Jason Voice because this came out the same year as Part 4. And I'm pretty sure Paramount saw this movie and, they, and it did a massive success. And they were like, oh shit, we gotta bring the Jason back for competition. So pretty much, they're like, Paramount was like, oh shit. Like when they saw Nine and Elstree because it was a massive success. And then as the films were going on, they were thinking of Freddy vs. Jason. And we got Freddy vs. Jason. Number one is Freddy versus Jason. What have I what haven't I said that hasn't been said in my previous video for Friday thirteenth film ranking? This film is the best horror movie of all time. It brings two of my fair horror icons to fight each other on the big screen, and it's pretty much one of the most fan service movies ever made, and it's probably one of the best movies I've ever seen in my entire life, and probably the best horror movie ever made, in my personal opinion. Sure it's not scary, but having Freddy and Jason fight is just pretty much my life is complete for horror. Like, for a horror movie fan, like, my life is complete for horror movies. Like, this is probably the best thing I've ever seen as a little kid. When I first saw this movie, I'm like, oh my god, this movie's fucking awesome. And it still is to this very day. I fucking love this movie. This movie is more of a Nightmare on Elm Street rather than a Friday the 13th movie. Because most of the film takes place on Nightmare on Elm Street. And it's more of Freddy being more of a main character for his world and stuff. Instead of Jason, Jason's more of that side character. So, pretty much the story is that Freddy has been forgotten about after Freddy's dead. So he decides to resurrect Jason and have him do his doing until he gets powers again. But then Jason won't stop killing people, and then they start fighting. It's a great way to get them to start fighting. Sure, for the film, you might say, oh, it gets boring when the, with the characters and stuff. Yeah, I will admit that, but once you get to the fight scenes, it, like... They, you pretty much take back whatever you said. It's like, oh, I take back what I said. This film was fucking awesome. Like, that's what I said when I was rewatching this. Well, not rewatching this, but when I was like, you know, looking up reviews and remembering stuff of the film. I'm like, this film was fucking awesome. This film's a masterpiece. Like, this is probably the best horror movie ever made. Like, the final battle is fucking amazing. Like, I absolutely loved it. See my favorite Freddy Krueger actor, Robert Englund, and probably my second favorite Jason Voorhees actor, because this is not Kane Hodder, sadly. Bit of a letdown, but hey, it has my favorite Jason Voorhees design ever. I love the max, the brown coat, and the whole black outfit. Like, it looks fucking amazing, and Freddy Krueger design as a whole looks phenomenal. 
And pretty much everything about this movie, in my opinion, is perfect. This is probably the perfect horror movie without a doubt. So it's an obvious 10 out of 10. This film is a masterpiece. And it's probably one of my favorite movies ever made. In my, if I made a video saying top 10 100, favorite 100 movies of all time, this would be on the list. Trey vs. Jason is my number one favorite horror movie of all time. So thank you guys for watching this horror movie rankings trilogy of the big slashers. And obviously you knew Freddy vs. Jason is my favorite horror movie of all time. So yeah. Best horror movie of all time. And I'll see you guys next time when I review Christopher Reeve Superman.